because I look like I do, <laughs> I'm forever coming out. Yes. So I don't look like a stereotype, I don't act like a stereotype you know, as a female engineer and as yeah. um, someone in the LGBTQIA plus community. So I find myself constantly coming out and there's always a, a wonder of, should I? Is this person actually safe to do this? Will I get a reaction that I want? Today we celebrate the fourth International Day of LGBTI plus people in STEM. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Caitlin Launt, a mechanical engineer who currently works at Icon Water and also the co-chair of Inter Engineer Australia. I asked Caitlin about her experience and journey and in particular whether it's harder in STEM in comparison to other disciplines. I think it's harder in STEM in part because we have a general slightly blokier culture. Yeah. So because we have that general slightly blokier culture, anything that, that deviates too far from that um, isn't necessarily problematic, but is suddenly seen as other. Mm. So the big challenges for me have always come from um, that, that idea of psychological safety and that people um, feeling like people might be allies. Yeah but because we've never had an opportunity for them to show their allyship or they've not done that in front of me, mm. never quite knowing that they're safe. So those little displays of, I suppose, active allyship yeah. can be really useful. Um, and especially if it's just like casual. Yes. Um, so the ones that I've seen are things like, like putting your pronouns on your email signature yeah. um, can be a really helpful one, not because I necessarily need to know your pronouns, um, but because it signals to me that you've at least thought about it yes. and you've at least turned around and said, OK, yeah, this is probably something that'll be helpful for someone who's gender diverse, so I'm going to do that. Um, equally, like rainbow somewhere in your office mm -hmm. or like a sticker or something like that um, lets me know in the same way that you've thought about it, yeah. the language you use. So you see this a lot in engineering workplaces. They send the email that says, hi, gents. Yeah. There might only be one or two women on that email list, yeah. but the sheer fact that they've used gents as their qualifier for all the people on that email list um, kind of indicates that they've not really thought about it. They've not really thought about the language they use. If you're in an interview, rather than turning around and saying, so what does your husband do? Um, <laughs> turning around and saying, what does your partner do? Yeah. Um, it's inclusive because they may or may not have a partner that is opposite gender to them. They might not have a partner at all. That's right, yeah. And equally, some people's partners, if they're gender diverse, might not actually like to be referred to as husband or wife or girlfriend, boyfriend. It just makes things a little bit yeah. neater. Yeah. It makes things easier. It makes you feel a little bit safer to turn around and say, yeah, actually, this place is probably welcoming to me because they haven't made an assumption based on what I look like when I walk in. So first of all, the argument for diversity isn't necessarily just about diversity for diversity's sake. Like we're not trying to tick a box, we're not trying to be more woke. It's actually, there are real tangible engineering benefits for us if we are not only working in diverse teams, but also exposed to people of diverse backgrounds. Yeah. So for example, like if you're trying to design something, if you've only got your own set of experiences or sets of experiences like yours to draw from yeah. in building that, you don't understand the problem. That's the simple thing. You just don't understand the problem fully. Um, and if you don't understand the problem fully, you're not going to get a good product. It's sometimes necessary for workplaces to turn around and say, actually, we've got 10 men who are all white on this list of people to, you know, to choose from. I can pick the best one from this lot or I can go back to market. And I think if you're going back to market, that idea of have I marketed it correctly, um, I think is one of the things. And I used to have a, one of the general managers that I used to work for basically had a, a, a thing on his, he, he had a, in the back of his mind a list of if I don't have at least 50% of these candidates being female engineers, I'm going back out to market because that's not good enough. Yes. Um, I've clearly done something in my recruitment, in my advertisement, in my something that means that women are looking at this advert and not thinking it's for them. Yes. So I need to do something different. And I think the same thing with LGBTQIA plus people, same thing with people of different cultural backgrounds. The more diverse people you have 
in your workplace in engineering, the more that diverse people will be able to look at your workforce and go, oh, I can see myself being that person, or I can see myself doing that thing. And, oh, that person's doing this degree at ANU. Cool, that's exciting. I'm like them. I could maybe do that too. Thank you.